Hi, I'm Danielle Fontenot and welcome to Revival Missions. I want to share a story with you from the Old Testament, but it applies today and it's about God's provision for us. This is one of my favorite stories in the Bible. It's about the prophet Elijah. It's found in 1 uh, Kings chapter 17. Uh, Elijah has declared that there will be no rain in the land. Uh, he's upset with King Ahab. King Ahab is evil in the Lord's sight, doing detestable things. Now we know when there is no rain, um, crops can't grow, animals won't get water, things start to die, there will be a famine in the land. Elijah is hiding from Jezebel, who is Ahab's wife. She's killing off the prophets. And uh, in this story, I just can see God's humor and how God does things. He does things in a way that we wouldn't do it. Uh, we say the kingdom of God is an upside down kingdom or a backwards kingdom. The way things work is just not how we would logically uh, do things. For example, if you uh, want victory, you have to surrender. You surrender to Jesus. That doesn't sound like victory. If you're in a war and you surrender, you lose. But in the kingdom of God, when we surrender, that's when we have victory. So. Let's read uh, 1 Kings chapter 17. I'm going to start in verse 7. Sometime later, the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. Then the word of the Lord came to him. This, it came to Elijah. Go at once to Zarephath of Sidon and stay there. I have commanded a widow in that place to supply you <clears throat> with food. So he went to Zarephath. And when he came to the town gate, a widow was there gathering sticks. He called to her and asked, Would you bring me a little water in a jar so I may have something to drink? As she was going to get it, he called, And bring me, please, a piece of bread. So Elijah shows up at this widow's house. Just note this. God did not send Elijah to a millionaire, a wealthy person. He sent her to a widow's house. This is where I find God has a sense of humor to show us how he provides and how he does things uh, in the way he thinks is best. And when he asks her, he says, give me just a little water. He's not saying, give me all of your water. <laughs> and he's like, give me a piece of bread. He's not asking for everything. And I think it's kind of funny. I wonder what was this widow thinking? Like, okay, it's reasonable. A man just showed up at my house. He's probably thirsty. He needs a little water. Uh, now he's asking for bread too. Okay. <laughs> so this is her response. As surely as the Lord your God lives, she replied, I don't have any bread. How many times do we think I don't have any? Now this message is on God's provision for us. And we can often say, I don't have. So she's saying, here's her excuse, I don't have any bread. Only, oh wait, she did have something. I think we all have something. I think we all have something that we can give to the Lord, even if it's a little bit. She said, only a handful of flour in a jar and a little oil in a jug. I'm gathering a few sticks to take home and make a meal for myself and my son that we may, we may eat it and die. Now, this was going to be their last meal. This was it. Um, the famine in the land, there was no more food. So this was her only little source left. They were going to eat it. And then after that, they were just going to plan to starve to death. But God is so good and he has such good plans for us and he does provide for us. Elijah said to her, don't be afraid, go home and do as you have said, but first make a small cake of bread for me from what you have and bring it to me and then make something for yourself and your son. For this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says, the jar of flour will not be used up and the jug of oil will not run dry until the day the Lord gives rain on the land. You know, the prophets represented God in the land. And what he is speaking is, yes, you just have a little, but first give to me. First, we give to God. When we get paid, we give to God a portion. We call our tithe and even our offerings, which is a free will um, offering that goes above a tithe. We give to God first. God can do way more with that little we give him when we trust him with it than as if we kept 100% of our money. You know, God's the one who enables us to work. He gives us the health in our bodies. He gives us wisdom and creative ideas to make money. It all belongs to Him. 
But when he requires that little, he's saying, do you trust me? Give to me first. And so this is what's happening in the story. He's like, Elijah's telling her, give to me first. I'm not asking for all of it. He said, just a little, then you will have, then the provision will come. He's given her a promise and God gives us that promise. You trust me with your finances. You will always have enough, even more than enough. Let's continue on. She went away. Here's is her obedience. She was obedient to the word that was spoken. And she did as Elijah had told her. So there was food every day for Elijah and for the woman and her family. For the jar, uh, the jar of flour was not used up and the jug of oil did not run dry in keeping with the word of the Lord spoken by Elijah. So she had a part to play. She had to trust and she had to be obedient to the word. And so that is our part to play. We trust God with everything, our lives, our finances. And how do we show God we trust him? We give, we take a portion and we give it to him and he can multiply it and he can use it. See, God doesn't need our money. It's for us. It's our part to give. So we show him that I believe in your kingdom. I'm going to give to the church. I'm going to give to missions. I want to see it funded. I want to see the gospel spread. And I know, Lord, when you, when I give to you, you're going to give back and you bless. You're going to bless me. And we see it here that she had provision. Had she disobeyed, this, this wouldn't have happened. Her, she would have cooked that last meal. They would have ate her and her son and died. So we see how the Lord provides, but there is a part that we play in it. And so I want to encourage you today in giving, giving to your home church where you're getting sped, I'm sorry, where you're getting fed spiritually uh, on Sundays, you give into that church. And then we call offerings, the free will um, offerings, the extra giving. We give into missions. We give to a widow. We give to the poor. And you will see God multiply and bless you. So I hope this encouraged you today. Thank you for joining in and stay tuned. Check out our website for more videos and more content. Hey there, I want to share with you an especially exciting opportunity to invest in our missions endeavors in Cambodia. Early on, in our time in Cambodia, an unexpected miracle took place in Phnom Penh where a sick man we prayed for was healed. From that miracle, God gave us three families to disciple. Little did I know that one of them would be called to pastor. Since then, two churches were birthed and Sompan, our disciple, has become pastor of both works. Sompan has a true pastor's heart, and it has been amazing to see his journey coming from a place where he had so many questions to where now, because of the anointing of God, he has become a father in the gospel. It's been truly supernatural. These churches continue to flourish and grow through the ministry of Sompan, and we're inviting you to see the harvest take place in Cambodia where Matthew 28 would be fulfilled where Jesus said to go out into all the world and make disciples of all nations. We're inviting you to partner with us to see a nation saved and to see Cambodia come to know Jesus as Lord and Savior.